everybody. There we go. Added a little more light. So hi there. Um, I was hoping to be outside again today, but it's a drizzly, rainy, gray kind of day. So I'm in the house and we have some things to talk about. Um, free shipping still going on through the end of May, uh, at least in the US, uh, discounted shipping rates worldwide. And then um, you can always email us for a quote, just in case. Let's see what else do we have going on? Slow Yarn Curl, Slow Yarn Curl is coming up and Black Sheep is going to be participating, sort of. Um, we have our own special little Black Sheep thing going on as part of the sponsors of the Slow Crawl. And I'm going to be adding a little page. I have a lot of the patterns up. I think I still have four or five more patterns um, that I have to finish for the Slow Crawl. But hey, go check that out. It's on Ra Ravelry, so Slow Yarn Crawl PNW. Uh, and you can find it, so that's great. Um, let's see, and then I think starting Friday, Friday, um, all your purchases at 35 shops count towards your passport. And that means yay, free patterns, and yay, stickers for the passport, and yay, entries and prize drawings. So all kinds of fun there. So anyway, um, I had said that uh, we would work on darning. So today, um, our little project is going to be darning. So if you are um, following along and you are darning with me, you'll want a darning egg um, of some sort. So I have a couple. Actually, I probably have more than this, but I have at least two because I like darning eggs. And then um, you'll need something with holes in it. And I, whenever I get a hole in one of my socks, so see there's a little hole here, I always make sure that I put the mate with it in my bag. <laughs> And that way I don't lose my socks later on. So that's my little tip. Um, so there's the little hole, little hole that um, we could be fixing. We might fix this sock. Um, so there's a couple of different methods for fixing your um, socks when you are darning a hole. And ooh, that's a good one for that. Let me show you here. So this is a woven patch, little woven patch right here. And with this one, you pick up, um, well, actually, you sort of pick up, but you sort of thread your needle through and you run um, yarn around your hole and then you weave a patch across it. So this is one method. And then the other method is right here. And this is a duplicate stitch. And duplicate stitch is very easy. So you just go in a little further on each side of where you're thinning. <laughs> That's the key for a duplicate stitch patch. Where your thinning yarn is, you have to catch this one before you have a full proper hole. That's how this works, is you want your duplicate stitch to fill it in and um, cover that area that's getting thin so that it prevents it from completely tearing apart. So that's how that one works. So there's two different ones. And look, this is the same pair of socks. One woven patch, clearly I had a hole. One duplicate stitch patch, so clearly it was getting thin here. And, um, and this one, you can see it's getting very, very thin. I've got an almost hole. I could probably call it a hole here. Um, but I always make sure that I put both of my mates in my bag. And I actually have a bag that I keep all of my socks in so that when I have time to darn, I can just grab those. I actually keep my darning eggs in this bag as well. It just hangs in my closet. And then whenever I need to, um, darn something, throw it in this bag, and then eventually somewhere down the road, I go through and I fix everything. So um, this is like my bag of stuff to be fixed. And like here I have a sock and it got a hole in the back in the lace. See this, this should not be there. You shouldn't be able to do that. Um, I really like these socks, so I am going to have to fix this. Um, so I'll deal with that another day. I'm not doing that one today, but um, there's usually, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So this one, oh, I do, I really love these socks. Um, so this one you can see maybe it's getting really thin right here. You can start to see the thinness in that heel. I'm really hard on the heel and I'm really hard on the ball of my foot. That's kind of how like I walk and I spin on my feet. So um, it's getting bad. And then you can also see that I had done a woven patch on this one, but now the side is starting to tear loose. So I need to go in and um, kind of reinforce this with some duplicate stitch and or um, add a little bit more to 
that woven patch. So having said that, so what do you need to um, practice darning today? We need socks that have a hole in them or a thin spot. So here I have a hole on the top of the toe and let's see if I have a thin spot. Oh, and there's a hole on the bottom. So this is a sad little pair. Look, I have a hole on the top and a hole on the bottom. That's just sad. I'm gonna have to fix that for sure. Uh, let me find another sock that has a thin spot. I need a sock with a thin spot because we want to look at both options today. Mm, let's see. One of these had a thinning spot too. Oh, well, yeah, that one sort of has a thin spot. We'll see if we can reconstruct this one or not. So anyway, you need your items that have holes in it. You need a darning egg. If you don't have a darning egg, you can substitute a light bulb, a potato. Um, yes, a potato. Um, you could substitute a ball, uh, anything that has some kind of round-ish surface. And the reason that you need that is because when you um, go to work on your area to be fixed, you need to stick your um, item into your sock so that you can stretch and pull that fabric. Um, and if you need to see this in slower motion beyond what I show you today, or if you just wanna rewatch some sections, I do have a series on my Kelly Slack Designs YouTube um, channel that is all about darning. So you can go through it step by step, but I'm gonna walk you through it here at Black Sheep just for the fun of it, right? We're just gonna learn how to darn some socks. So it's just important that you have something that you can use to hold the hole and your sock, and you can get a little stretch. That's the, that's the key here. So it doesn't have to be a darning egg, but the darning egg is nice because they do have handles, so you can kind of have something to hold on to. So item with a hole, darning egg, and or implement. And then we also need things like tapestry needles, and scissors, scissors are important. Um, nice sharp scissors, scissors are important. That's a little scissor fob. Isn't that a cute little scissor fob? Yeah. So tapestry needles. For tapestry needles, we need a couple of different kinds. Um, you can use a bent tip um, or a straight one, just so long as you have a blunt tapestry needle. And then you need a sharp tapestry needle. So this one's a sharp tapestry needle. Uh, the bent tips are used for, well, I shouldn't say that, the blunt, either the bent or straight, the blunt tipped ones are used to do the duplicate stitch, whereas the sharp ones are used for a woven patch. So that's the key there. And I am going to leave out, um, a blunt tipped tapestry needle or two, because we are going to start with, um, repairing a duplicate stitch hole. I should also mention that you'll want some kind of yarn and you can um, have either matching yarn or contrasting yarn. If you use a matching yarn, it is much, much harder to um, see the patch when you're finished, but it's also harder while you're working on it. So that's just something, something to consider. You, um, you know, it's up to you. You can use contrasting yarn or you can use matching yarn. It's totally up to you. So let's get started. I am going to um, flip the camera down so that I can position it and I can show you how to start a duplicate stitch um, patch on a sock. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab like a yard or so of yarn to get started. And that way, um, yeah, that's good. That way I have enough to hopefully do the entire duplicate stitch patch. Um, I'm not gonna do the whole patch while I'm on Facebook Live though. I'm gonna get you started and show, it how, show you how it works and then we're gonna switch to the woven patch. So let me just move this and And here we go. Let's see, move that forward. I have my little workspace here. And let me fix the, oops, sorry about that. There we go. Maybe. Come on now. Come on, camera. There we go. Alrighty. Sorry for the carnival ride there. 
So you'll just want to go ahead and thread your tapestry needle. And when you have a longer um, piece of yarn or thread, whether you are stitching um, cross stitch or embroidery or knitting, it's always helpful to pull an extra long tail and then slowly work that tail um, to be smaller. All right, I think I'm gonna use this one. It has a little thinner handle. Let's go find, oh, here's our lovely thin spot. This is a great thin spot, look at that. Nice and thin, you can really see what's going on here. And that's the purpose of the darning egg. It's really just to help you to spread it out and move it around. So when you are patching or repairing a um, duplicate stitch patch, you want to start a little bit um, below or and to the side of where you're going to duplicate stitch because you actually want to do a bigger section of duplicate stitch. You don't want to do just the area that's becoming holy. You want to go outside of that so that you are reinforcing all the way around that area. So just kind of pick um, maybe two rows. Well, let's go one more row down. Maybe two rows down. I think let's go one over. There we go. So like two rows down and one row over, one stitch over. And then I am going to leave a little bit of a tail and we're just going to ignore that. And now you're just going to duplicate stitch. So when you duplicate stitch, you follow the line of your knitting and you just slide your needle so that you're following the line of your knitting, just like this. Do, 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 just like this. There, isn't that soothing watching me pull that yarn through? <sighs> nice and soothing. This is a great thing to do when you are watching TV. I do believe that um, Susan, I think that was, it was Susan, I'm pretty sure, who taught the class. Um, that's what she said she does, is she just keeps a basket and she throws all her darning in it. And then when she's watching TV and she needs something to do, she just picks up a pair of socks and fixes them. All right. And I want to go just one stitch over. And now, I, because I want to go up, I'm going to go under this one so that it loops it around and brings it up to my next row. And now we're going to go back just like this and follow the line of the stitching. So there we go. That is the whole concept right there. You just duplicate stitch, and don't you feel fancy now? Look at that. You learned how to darn. It isn't that hard, especially when there's not really a hole yet. So just keep working, just keep working. Do, 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 do. All right. So there, that's the concept. You just duplicate stitch. This is a duplicate stitch. It's very simple. You just follow the knitting and keep going. And just wait until this is all filled in and you'll have a pretty little patch on the bottom of your sock and you won't even really notice that it's there because it's on the outside. And it doesn't add that much bulk or weight. That's the beauty of duplicate stitch. So hang on, let me just do to do, do. All right, there we go. And then because I want to go up a row, I'm going to take it under this row here. Do, 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 do. All right. And we just keep going. So now you have the idea down, right? Does anybody have any questions about a duplicate stitch darned patch? Because if not, ooh, that's very thin there. Ooh, we're going to make magic here. Yep. Because we're going to make stitches out of almost thin air. Yep, just keep stitching along and hope that you don't break it. So much fun. Alrighty. And because these stitches are, are much thinner, I'm also trying to make sure that I 
size them appropriately. This is like almost stitching air. Look at this. Oh boy. But hey, when we're done, it's going to look great. And that's another thing. When you finish, um, you just need to take your ends and work them into the duplicate stitch area because um, that just helps to reinforce it again. So there, I'm going to bring it up. Okay, and we'll just keep working, just keep working. Let's see, we're pretty well half done with this one. I can see that I need to do one, two, three, I'll do probably four more rows of this, working my way up um, until I am all finished. And then uh, I'll put my ends in. And then my sock will be safe to wear again, and I will not be making any holes <laughs> in this sock, at least yet. Oh, and I can see it's time to sort of pull a little bit so that my tail gets smaller. And look at this, this is just like almost air. Just thread our way up and over. Duplicate stitch, beautiful stuff. It's gonna fix this, it's gonna be so nice. Okay, and once I do this very airy row, then I will switch and we will do a woven patch. And again, I won't do the whole thing because uh, I don't wanna bore you here on Facebook Live by watching me while I darn my socks. Goodness gracious, that would be, that would be boring, wouldn't it? Yeah. But it's fun to at least watch the beginning of it, see how it happens. And again, if you need more help, um, I do have a whole series that you can watch, rewatch, and practice with. And it's mm -hmm. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's just part of my Kelly Slack designs. Okay, there we go. So once again, um, I'll just keep going up. So I've worked my way up. And then I'll do at least two, maybe three more rows. Do at least two for certain. And I will finish my little patch. And there, doesn't that look so much better? And uh, if you're trying this at home, I hope you are noticing that it doesn't feel that much thicker. It's not that much thicker at all. Mm -mm. Okay, so let's take this out. There we go. That's the beginning. So I will finish this later, but I'll just keep working my little darned patch. Um, and then my socks will be safe to wear again. Yay! Happy socks! Okay, so let me set this aside. And remember, we needed the blunt-tipped tapestry needle to do the patch for um, the duplicate stitch, but now we actually want our sharp. See, it's much sharper, sharp tip. Here's a blunt tip versus a sharp tip. So um, chenille needles work really nicely for this too if you're having trouble finding a sharp tipped tapestry needle, just as a comment. Okay, and this time we need a darning egg and I'm going to go for my heavier darning egg um, give me something just a little more substantial to hold on to. It's a personal preference. So just slide my darning egg in. And then, oh, we need another length of yarn. So let's get some blue or light blue, turquoise, whatever. And then this time what we need to do is we have to build a loom, essentially. We have to build a loom that we're going to weave around this hole. So we want to sort of assess how big it is, assess how many stitches have uh, really broken here. And it looks like it's just maybe two or three stitches here in this hole. And we have to go a little bit outside of it. So I'm going to start by going up and I'm going to take it in, uh, uh, actually, so I've got to go down a little bit. Let's start here. Maybe here. No, I'm going to start. I'm going to go in between my stitches. There we go. And I'm just going to go every other row. I'm just trying to pick up that strand of knitting in between every other row. And I'm trying to build a loom from which to knit. So I want to... Um, put my yarn in, and that's why it's important to have that sharp tip. Mm -hmm. And then this time, what we're gonna do is go across the top of this hole. And same idea here, we wanna grab 
one arm of every stitch as we go across, just one arm. That's also why it's helpful to have that darning egg stretched across. So let's see. Let's see how wide that is. And you don't want to pull that too tight. You want to have a little bit of give there. So let's see. Let's do one more arm, I think. This is all just guesswork. There's no precise number of stitches to go. It depends on the size of the hole. It's very important because what we want to do is cover the whole thing. And we're going to do the same thing that we did over here um, is every other row we're going to try to take this tapestry needle. And sometimes it's helpful, especially if you are um, preferentially handed, and I am, I'm very much a righty, uh, to use your darning egg and your sock and flip it upside down. And then just every other, every other, every other. And that looks pretty good. Every other row, just pick it up, move it down. And again, we don't want this too tight. I'm just going to come back in and adjust that a little bit. So we're just building the little loom around our hole that we are going to use to fix it. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did up here, and we're going to pick up that every other, oh, that means that I either have a delivery or my husband has gone to the mailbox. That's that beep. And also, I have somebody flying overhead, and they're quite loud. Okay, there we go. So now we've made our little loom, right? I'm just going to, again, make sure it's not too tight. Just a little adjustment. There we go. So now that we have our little outline sketched, this area is going to work as the outside of our loom. And what we need to do is we need to go back and forth and we need to put in um, the warp and then we'll weave the weft. So warp is one direction, weft is the opposite direction. Um, in this case, because we are doing a little bit of weaving um, on a not actual loom, we can make our warp go either up and down or side to side. And I usually just go side to side because I'm already poised to do that based on where my yarn is. So now to make our little warp, mm -hmm. I'm gonna just, oops, knocked over my salt. No, not my salt, I knocked over a seasoning. Okay, just like this. So we are going to make these side to side warp strands like every other row and just put them sort of on top of our hole and the idea is that we are going to be building a platform again that's going to protect that hole so that it can, can't become more of a hole by opening up more by taking more um, stitches away from the integrity of the sock so just back and forth back and forth and it is going to look very open right now because um, when you are all finished weaving back and forth and up and down, it's an excellent idea to go back in and to add more strands, just to reweave more strands. So I'm just going to take this under here, get it up. You don't want to do this too tightly because you do want to make sure that there's a little bit of give. That's the disadvantage of ones that already have holes where you have to make this woven patch is that it's easy to get it too tight and then this little section of sock becomes uncomfortable. So usually we try to make sure that um, when we go to darn, we don't have holes so we don't have to do a woven patch. We can just do the pretty, pretty duplicate stitch. So now that we are to this point, we need to put our... Um, warp in because we've, or excuse me, our weft in because we made our warp. So at this point you have to go over under and then under over and you have to decide which which direction you're going first. Now I'm going to go under this stitch and I'm going to go over this yarn, under, over, under, over. And now when I come back I'm going to go under this one, okay, under, over, under, over, under, over. Mm 
And I guess I could catch my tail in there. I was going to put it in later, but maybe I'll just let that go ahead and do that. So under, over, under, over, under. Do, do, do. And we're just going to keep doing this back and forth. Anybody have questions about the woven patch while you're watching me work here? Or are you just listening to the not so dulcet sounds of my voice? Okay, so we go under this one, over, under, over, under, over. Just back and forth, back and forth. Okay. I think you guys can see what I'm doing and get the gist of the plan. Just like that. So what I'll do is I'll keep doing this all the way across and then this is looking just a little bit open. So I'll probably put a pair of rows in here and I might put a pair of rows in here and put one more in up here so that this is a nice solid patch very much like this one. And then I can wear it again, and it will be happy. So anyway, um, anybody have any questions about how to make that duplicate stitch or the woven patch? Otherwise, um, I'm going to go ahead and we'll talk about slow crawl for just a bit, and then we'll talk about what we want to do next time. So any questions? Any, any Anybody... Is anyone going to go darn their socks now that they know how? You can rewatch this video and you can watch me duplicate stitch or start this patch. And like I said, if you need more help, I do have a full video series on my Kelly Slack Designs YouTube channel that's all about darning and it walks you through it step by step um, for woven patches, uh, duplicate stitch patches, and for true patches where you have a giant hole and you have to actually sew a patch in. We really try to avoid that. You are so welcome, Willa. I hope that you try this. It's really, really easy. It's actually terribly soothing. Um, you know, I am probably going to get all of my socks darned in the next week just because now that I'm doing it again, um, this is something I could do. And if Ina interrupts me, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I have to put it down because I can come back to it. Um, and I do struggle with that because she likes to run away with my um, projects when I'm working on it. So, oh good, I'm so glad that I helped you out. Um, I'm just gonna set this aside, that way I can finish it later. So, let's see, let's talk real fast. Um, what do you guys, yes, exactly, yes, I'm sure you've woven one on a shawl. So, um, what do you guys wanna do on Wednesday? I had kind of thought that maybe I would, um, I would do like something with lace where I can show you the basics of lace or absolutely, Luana, of course you were doing this right. It's not that hard, is it? It's not hard at all. It's very simple. Everybody's so scared of fixing holes, but it's really not that hard. You just have to get in there and try it. And if you screw up, well, you know, it was one hole. You just try again. Um, so I don't know. I, I was kind of thinking about doing something with lace. I could just show you the basic mechanics of um, like single yarn overs and double yarn overs and the difference between a slip, slip, knit, knit two together, slip one, knit two together, pass slip stitch over, slip two stitches, knit one, pass the slip stitches over, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know, does that sound good for Wednesday? We'll do like a basic lace primer. Um, and then Friday, cause I'm trying to do a, a little mini lesson, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, I don't know, I don't know what to do Friday. What would you guys like to see on Friday? I spin, I tat. Um, I have a minute weaver we could set up like one of the little itty bitty minute weavers and I could show you how to do the little minute weaver, that's fun. Um, or I do know how to crochet. Tina is much better at crochet than I am because I stopped kind of learning crochet and started learning knitting um, before I advanced very far with crochet. So um, I have every intention of making CAD file at some point, like I have the yarn wound and I have the pattern and I have my hooks, my beautiful, beautiful hooks um, from Tulip. Oh, nice hooks. But I just end up knitting. And I have thought about picking up crochet because um, at least with the crochet, if Ina rips a little bit out, I haven't lost a whole bunch of <laughs> stitches that run down. So um, I have considered just picking up the crochet again for a little while until she's... Um, I hate to say tamer, but she is a little bit wild. She is my wild child. 
Um, and she loves being outdoors and she loves dirt. My child loves dirt. I think every child loves dirt, but I feel like mine especially loves dirt and mud and water. She loves playing with the ducks. She loves the kitties. Uh, we have koi in our pond and um, we go out and feed the koi and they're big. I mean, they're like good sized koi now. So they're really fun to watch and Ina enjoys that. Anyway, um, I don't know. It just depends. What, what do you guys want to see um, in future lessons? I'm trying to think of things that are useful that are small little tidbits that you can, you know, kind of learn from, but um, it's nothing overwhelming. So I don't know. I guess I'll do lace on Wednesday and then maybe we'll talk about Friday again and we'll try to find something fun for Friday. Um, I don't know. I've done a little bit of tatting. I've done some tatting. Um, I could... I guess I could do, I think Tina did a little session on like beads, beads in lace, uh, not lace, but just in knitting and crochet in general, just beads. So Tina covered that. Um, and we've both done blocking several times, partially because I had things to block and partially because, you know, there's different treatments, different things that you're doing depending on the shape of your item and what tools you have available because that's important. Um, so yeah, I don't know. You guys just let me know what you want to see. Just some reminders, so stay safe and take care of yourselves. Stay healthy, as healthy as you can, um, or are able to be, as healthy as you are able to be. Um, I am still wearing my mask when I go out. So, you know, I am, I'm still doing some mask wearing when I, when I go out. And um, I'm trying not to go out very much. So, uh, you know, be socially responsible and physically distance. I don't like that social distancing. It's not actually social distancing. I'm physically distancing myself, right? I can still be social. It's just I'm physically six feet away from you or trying to be. Um, I picked up some potting soil and I put some more herbs on the deck. So the next time that we go out to the deck, I will hopefully have even more flowers and things to show you. Because um, apparently when I can't go anywhere, what I like to do is grow lots of things. So, and my snap peas, like I'm already, I have snap peas that are blooming. They're really pretty. They're purple. And then I have snow peas that are starting. Um, and they are so tasty. Just, there's nothing quite like a fresh, tasty snow pea. I know peas aren't for everybody, but I really enjoy them. So anyway, um, don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy. We have the free shipping going all the way through the end of May. If you're in the U.S., we're still doing Black Sheep Craft Time, so use the hashtag Black Sheep Craft Time so I can see what you're doing. I would love to see your little darned spots um, in your socks or your sweaters if you go and fix a hole uh, now that you've seen how easy it is. So Black Sheep Craft Time and then I can find you. <laughs> and then, um, oh, Slow Yarn Crawl is coming and I think we finally have passports up on the website and I still have work to do. Um, so I'm hoping to have all of the new patterns available for you to look at on the slowcrawl.com website. My goal is tonight, cross your fingers. Um, I'm gonna try and get a bunch done while Ina sleeps here for the next mm, hour and a half. I probably have an hour to an hour and a half when she'll stay asleep. Um, so my goal is to get that up so you can see all of that um, and yeah anyway all kinds of fun stuff coming up and I can't wait to share it with you all oh and you know that Rosita shawl that I blocked you know I took it off the pins and it turned out so pretty look at this look at that and Renee did a fabulous job but isn't that nice and I love this one because it just kind of sits over your shoulders and you don't have to fight it and put on, you know, all kinds of stuff. But it's just there. It just sits on your shoulders and it's there and it's warm. And, uh, and Renee did a great job. She did a great job. See that? Renee, I hope you watch this. Great job, Renee. It looks so good, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so that's that lovely Rosita shawl. And that was what we blocked. So now you can see it all dry and happy. I love it when that happens. All right. So I will be back on Wednesday and uh, Wednesday we'll do some basic lace and then maybe Friday, yeah, maybe Friday, 
we'll try more tatting. I don't know. Um, what could I show you in tatting? Uh, we did the self-closing mock ring, and I showed you how to put beads on with the self-closing mock ring. I guess we could have a discussion of beads and tatting. Um, it's not my strongest suit, but I do some of it. Um, or we could play with onion rings. Or, um, let's see, I think I showed a double pico already, so that was fun. So, I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll talk again on Wednesday, and hopefully we can come up with something. So anyway, stay safe. Make sure that you are shopping your local stores, especially us, Black Sheep Fiber Emporium, because you help us stay in business when you do. And we like to bring you fun things. So we have new fun things that are coming. Uh, make sure you're checking out the website and um, make sure you are subscribing to the YouTube channel and also clicking like on our page. That way you get notifications. Um, and I will see you all again on Wednesday at about 2 o'clock central. So that's 2 o'clock my time. <laughs> 3 o'clock Eastern. Um, what's that? Um, 1 o'clock on uh, Mountain. Mountain? Right? I think it's Mountain. And about noon-ish Pacific time. So anyway, I'll see you guys again. Stay safe.